Hello everyone. Sorry, late technical difficulties. Um, but welcome to Connect 2021, our first women's conference. Thank you so much for joining. Um, I'm so excited to actually be able to, to have this conference and to host this conference. Um, and for those of you who don't know, my name is Bernadette Jones. And if this is your first night um, joining the conference, welcome. Thank you so much for for joining. And for those of you who have been with us the past two nights, thank you so much for participating. Um, I also want to say thank you to our speakers. They did an awesome job. Um, amazing words the past two nights on connecting with the word and remembering the dream and remembering the vision and um, remembering the word. So if you missed the past two nights, I would encourage you to go back and watch those. They're on our Facebook page and they are also on our YouTube um, channel. So you can go back and watch those. And I would highly encourage you, even if you were here, watch them again. Um, just water that word and get it in you because we want to be um, doers of the word and not just just hearers. So I highly encourage you to go back, watch those and and walk out the word because like I said we want to be doers and we don't want to be just hearers of the word. So before I dive into my message tonight, I want to tell you guys a little bit about what Heart to Heart Ministries is because I know a lot of you have never heard of it before. Um, but the purpose of Heart to Heart Ministries is to connect the heart of women to the heart of God. Um, God gave me that vision back in 2008 to start this, to where women can come together and connect with each other and build relationships while also building their relationship with God. So encouraging each other, challenging each other, um, helping each other grow and having accountability. That's the, the purpose of of what we do. And there are just several different ways that we do that. One is the conference, which is our first, hopefully the first of many. Um, we also have a blog, a YouTube channel, and our blog is reaching, has reached over people in over 18 different countries. And we have a podcast that we started this year that is also reaching people across the United States as well as in other countries. So we are reaching the world with the word. Um, and then we also have books. And so just a couple of the books that we have, one is called So You Think You're a Good Woman. You can buy this on Amazon and it's an in-depth look at the Proverbs 31 woman because we have this idea and we're taught and we're trained um, this idea of what a good woman is. And it changes. If you ever notice, it changes not from person to person and woman to woman. Um, even society changes their definition of, of what a good woman is. And we're taught different things. And if you base it off the man that you're with, each man is going to have his own definition, different definition of a good woman. But if it's based off the word, the unchanging word of God, you don't have to change for anybody. Because if you're if you're based off the word of what the word says a good woman is, you're good. You're solid. You don't have to change for anybody or change who you are. Um, and then another book that we have, another resource, is called Increased Giving. And that has to do with um, just as we increase financially, you know, the word says you can either be generous or you could not be. And so as we increase financially, what do we want to make sure we're also being generous givers? We want to make sure our giving increases. So as you know, we get commas in our income, we want to make sure we have commas in our giving to still stay on that, that generous side. Because if our giving doesn't go up when our income does, then we go back to being a not generous giver. And so that changes the cycle of our, of our harvest. And actually that went my pastor. Um, said I needed to write, I did an offering teaching and he was like, you need to write a book about that. And I was like, all right. <laughs> um, so, but those are just a couple of the resources that we have. You can go on Amazon, um, and find those, or you can go to our website, which is heart to heart men, M I N dot com. And they're all there as well as you can check out our blog, um, and take a look at that and see how we're reaching people. So we are actually going to dive right into the word tonight. And what I want to talk about is if you're taking notes, it's going to be titled, Does He Know You? And even that question, because we've been talking about connect, and this is Connect Women's Conference. I said, you know, we've been talking about connecting with the word, remembering the dream, remembering the vision. And even to remember, it means you've got to connect with it. You've got to stand on it. 
And, um, you know, Miss Trish gave an awesome testimony about how, you know, she stood on the word in healing for her son. And so that takes a heart connection. And because, you know, the devil will try to get you disconnected. And so what I actually want to, the verse I want to go to is going to be out of Matthew chapter 7. And it's going to be verses 21 through 23. And I'm going to read it out of the amplified version. And it says, and this is Jesus talking. And he says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only he who does the will of my father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day when I judge them, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name and driven out demons in your name and done many miracles in your name? And then I will declare to them publicly, I never knew you. Depart from me. You are banished from my presence. You who act wickedly disregarding my command. And actually the New King James Version says, um, you who practice lawlessness. And so, so often we ask the question, do you know Jesus? Do you know Jesus? And yes, that, that is a very important question. We need to be asking people that question. Do you know Jesus? Do you have a relationship with Jesus? But we know relationships go both ways. So it's not just, do you know him? Because even Lucifer knows him. He was there in the Bible. But does he know you? Because there's only two things that you're going to hear on the day of judgment. It's either well done by good and faithful servant or to depart from me. I never knew you. Now, I know you're probably wondering, okay, how can Jesus say he never knew me when he created me? He knows how many hairs are on my head. He, he knows me. Well, he created you. Every manufacturer knows their creation. They know every detail of it. But there's more to this than we even take time to realize. And so um, another scripture I want to look at is Luke chapter 6, verses, verse 46. And this is out of the New King James. And it says, but why do you call me Lord, Lord, and not do the things which I say? And the Amplified says, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not practice what I tell you? And this is Jesus talking. He's saying, why do you call me Lord and you don't do the things that I say? So pretty much, why are you calling me your Lord and you're disobedient to the things I've told you to do? There's no point in calling me Lord because I'm not your Lord if you're not going to be obedient to what I'm telling you to do. And like I said, we want to ask people, do you know Jesus? We, we absolutely want to make sure we're still asking that question um, because that is the question we need to ask the sinner. But when it comes to the believer, it needs to be, does he know you? And he knows you through your obedience. And when, when was the last time that we even asked ourselves, am I being obedient to the word? Am I being obedient to the call of God on my life? And like I mentioned before, relationships go both ways. It's not just you know him because anybody will say, oh, I know Jesus. I know Jesus. That's great. That, that's great. Or people will be like, I, I believe in God. Well, scripture says, even Satan believes there's one God. Like even he believes that. And it says, even the demons believe and they shudder. But shouldn't we know him more than that? Shouldn't we have that relationship and that revelation? Not just, I know him. I mean, and of course, Satan knows him. He, he was there. He's seen heaven. He was in the Bible times. he We read about his story in the Bible. So yes, even Satan knows, but does that really matter? Is Satan going to be in heaven? No, he's not. So just to say, oh, I know Jesus or I go to church, that doesn't mean anything. Do you have that relationship? And does he know you through your obedience to the word? And even Satan knows the Bible better than most Christians. I mean, he lived it. So, and how many of us are really in our word the way we should be? Like, you know, Pastor Mary talked about on Friday night, connecting to the word, living it out, walking it out, not just having um, head knowledge. But how do you know it in your heart? Do you have it in your heart? I mean, I think it's called, my pastor called it a mental ascent. Like, you know it. And you're just like, yeah, you know, I know that. Like, I know. Or, you know, you're trying to tell somebody. So I'm like, yeah, I know, I know, I know. It's like, okay, you know, but how come you're not, you're not doing it? <laughs> you know, you know the word, but are you doing the word? So even just to know it. Um, 
And even Satan quoted part of the Bible to Jesus when he tried to tempt him. So, you know he knows it. And the only way for deception to work, my pastor's been in an awesome series on this on Wednesday nights in our Holy Ghost University, but he's been talking about um, faith to overcome in the last days and deception and how in the last days, the only way deception works, there's got to be a little bit of truth in there. Like it's got to be like, that sounds right. Like that really does. Like it sounds like it's, it lines up with the word, but you've got to know the truth know the truth and know what the word says just because it sounds good okay but is that what the word says is that specifically what it says because satan will even come and he'll he'll cause us to question because it's the first oldest trick in the book but it works because even when he approached eve it was well did god say and then you start well did god say and you start to misquote and misremember what he said as opposed to no I know what he said I know what his word says or let me go back and look at it and don't think I want to throw this in here too real quick don't think just because someone is a popular preacher or someone's popular or it sounds cute that it's the truth because there's a lot of cute quotes that go around but we know cute quotes are not always the truth and most cute quotes I mean it has most cute quotes are not truth. They're not the whole truth of the word. There might be little bit parts of it where they sound good or they make you feel good, but it's not what the word says. So just because someone popular said something, I will challenge you guys, go look it up in the word and see what the word has to say. Don't believe it just because they say it. And I've been fortunate, the pastors that I'm under now and even the church I went to before have always said, go look it up in the word for yourself. Don't just because I'm up here, don't just take my word. Go read the word and know it for yourself. Because when those times come, you have to know that you know that you know that you know that you know the truth of the word. So sorry, that was a little off topic (laughs) there. But I wanted to throw that in there of how much we need to, to know and just love the truth. Know and love the truth of the word. And even in the, in the, um, you know, does he know you? Because what Satan wants us to do, everything he tries to get us to goes against God, which is disobedience. It's pretty much everything Satan tries to get us to do. He tries to get us to disobey God and be rebellious. And think about this. Satan knows what heaven looks like. He's seen it. He knows how great it is. Do you think he wants you to have that? Do you think he wants you to go see the streets paved with gold? The gates of the, with pearls? Do you think he's going to be like, no, you know what? Go ahead. Go. I want you to go to heaven. I want you to enjoy that. No, he can't have it. He's a sore loser. If I can't have it, nobody can have it. And the way he, he hurts, God is through us. So think about that. Satan Satan knows what he's trying to keep you from, even in regards to, to what God has for you here in the earth, because it's not all about when you get to heaven. Even what God has for you here, he knows. And he does not even want you to enjoy just the slightest bit of it. But I know some people will be like, well, you know, the Bible is just full of rules and it's just a bunch of rules that we have to follow. And ugh, I just, ugh, who wants to follow rules? Everywhere you go has rules. You go to school, there's rules. There's rules on your job. There's rules in your house. Let's rephrase that. If you're raising your kids right, you have rules for your house. You have rules for your kids. You were raised with rules. We have rules of the land. Every city has rules. Every country you go to has rules. Every state has rules. If you go to a foreign country, they have rules. Everywhere you go has rules. So when it comes to the kingdom of God, there is a way the kingdom operates. There are rules to the kingdom. If you were to move to another country, you have to learn the culture. You have to learn the rules. You have to learn the language. You have been, when you get born again, you are translated into the kingdom of God. You are a new creation. So you are born again. You are completely new creation and you have to learn how this kingdom operates. You have to learn the language. You have to learn the culture of the kingdom because you've been raised in the worldly kingdom. 
So you know how, how the world talks. So you have to learn this new language. You have to learn this new culture. You have to learn the new behaviors of how, okay, how do, how do I live this Christian life? How am I supposed to live? How am I supposed to walk it out? How am I supposed to behave? How am I supposed to dress in this new kingdom, in this new life that I have chosen to enter into? Remember, this is a choice you made. You chose to enter into the kingdom of God through a relationship with Jesus. That is the only way through a relationship with Jesus. Why would you choose to enter into the kingdom and be like, you know, I don't want to follow any of the rules. Mm -mm, Nope. I'm not going to do it. Do that in another country and you're going to kill somebody because if you try to drive on the right side of the road when you should be on the left, you're going to hurt yourself or you're going to hurt somebody else. You don't think it's any different in the kingdom? You don't think you're going to hurt somebody else or hurt yourself? Satan's whole job is to steal, kill, and destroy. And when you are in the kingdom, you are equipped to fight and overcome and win. And so I want to address this this thing with fear that's, that's going on where people say it's okay to be afraid and do things in fear. That's not in the Bible. And the reason it's not in the Bible is because let's talk about Job. Job, Job 325, Job said, the thing I greatly feared came upon me. Think about everything that came upon Job. Think about everything he lost. Now he said, the thing I greatly feared came upon me. So that means fear opened the door to Satan to bring about everything that he feared, losing his children, losing his money, everything that happened fear opened the door to that that is how dangerous fear is that is why God says do not fear that is why he says I have not given you a spirit of fear but of power love and a sound mind power power we have power over fear and fear is a spirit if he says I haven't given you a spirit of fear you rebuke that spirit of fear you don't walk with fear because if you're walking in fear now you're in disobedience to God Because he clearly says, do not fear. Do not be afraid. So let me think about that. When we fear, we are now in disobedience to God. And we are now walking in Satan's territory. So we just wanted to throw that in there real quick. And then remember Luke 6, 46. And it says, why call me Lord, Lord, and not do the things that I say? And then Hebrews 11, 6. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. God. To obey God takes faith because you can't see what he is saying. You're only going by his word. You're trusting what he says. That's why that relationship is so important. Connecting to the word is so important because his word is his will for your life. His word is his will for your life and you learn who he is through the word. I made a post a few days ago and it says, you know, we, and it talked about how we talk about how good God is. And then we turn around and blame the bad things on him. Look, you have an enemy whose whole purpose is to steal, kill and destroy. That is his character. God came so that you may have life and have it more abundantly. So if you're seeing death, destruction anywhere, that's not God. God raised the dead. Jesus raised the dead. He brought things that were dead to life. So anytime we're seeing death, destruction in your life, that is not God. He didn't do that to teach you a lesson. He knows how to talk. He knows how to have a conversation with you. And he talks to you through his word and he'll talk to you through your pastor or your spiritual leader. That's how he talks to you. So think about that. You know, obedience takes faith. To obey God absolutely takes faith because you're just going off his word and you're trusting him. You're saying, God, I trust you. I completely trust you and I'm walking by faith. And faith pleases him. When we live by faith, it pleases him. The just are supposed to live by faith every day, not just a once in a while thing. When it says the just shall live by faith, that's a daily thing. You live every single day. So that is supposed to be our lifestyle. Faith is our lifestyle. And in James 1.22, the Amplified Version says, But prove yourselves doers of the word, actively and continually obeying God's precepts 
and not merely listeners who hear the word but fail to internalize its meaning. Deluding yourselves by unsound reasoning contrary to the truth. And I want to read that again. It says, but prove yourselves doers of the word, actively and continually obeying God's precepts and not merely listeners who hear the word but fail to inherit, but fail to internalize its meaning. Deluding yourselves by unsound reasoning contrary to the truth. So if you're just a listener, one translation says you're deceiving yourself. If you're just listening to, to the word, you're deceiving yourselves. We are to be doers of the word. This is the person he created you to be in his likeness. God did not create a sinner. Think about that. Adam and Eve were not sinners. They didn't sin until they disobeyed God and ate of the fruit. So I want you to think about think about that because I'm going to build on that. It says when you got born again, you became a new creation. Back to being in his likeness means you are no longer a sinner. So stop calling yourself a sinner. Because remember, he did not create you that way. So when you become born again and you're born in his likeness, he calls you a saint. He calls you righteous. Righteous just means in right standing with God. That is who you are. That is now your identity. You don't have to earn it. But through that relationship with Jesus, washed in the blood, you are a new creation. And he calls and he sees you righteous. A sinner has the lifestyle of sin. So when you become born again, you should no longer have that lifestyle of sin. And he says, you can, and the reason he can say, and again, back to the, I never knew you, is because of our rebellion. Because that's unrecognizable. And I know many of us, we've either seen this in a movie or you know somebody to where like you grew up with somebody, you knew who they were as a kid. And then all of a sudden they start hanging out with the wrong person or the wrong crowd. And they start becoming rebellious, talking back just doing things that are not of the character of the person that you know and you can look at this person and be like who are you like I don't even know you anymore you know them but you don't know the person that you're looking at because of the rebellious lifestyle that they've chosen Again, you know the person, you you know who they are, but you don't recognize the behavior that you're seeing because you're like, this is not who you are. This is not who you truly are. And so that's how he can say, depart from me, I never knew you. Because when we're disobedient and rebellious, he's like, that's not who you are. That's not who you were created to be. That's not how you're supposed to live. To say good and faithful servant means I was obedient to the call. I was obedient to the word. But depart from me, I never knew you. I was rebellious. I didn't live the lifestyle. I didn't walk it out every day. It's a choice. I didn't walk it out. I was completely rebellious as opposed to being obedient. And so he knows us through our obedience. And in Matthew 7, verse 21, in the Amplified, and this, I just really want to reiterate this, it says, not Everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only he who does the will of my father who is in heaven. This and this again, this is Jesus talking. He says, but only he who does the will of my father in heaven. You might be saying, okay, what is the will? This right here, this Bible filled with his will open it start there um what has he called you to do what is your purpose are you walking it out are you are you living it or do you not like it so you just gonna sit back and think god's gonna change his mind he's not that's what he called it he created you to do he gave you that personality to do that um and so even with his will are you praying for your enemies? Are you tithing? Are you giving? Are you forgiving? Are you walking in love? That's his will. Believe it or not, that's his will. Praying for your enemies. 
you're going to deal with persecution. Being joyful when trials hit. Because he said, be of good cheer for I have overcome the world. And it's, I know sometimes we're like, mm-hmm. But again, you do this through faith. He never intends anything that he tells us to do, to do it on our own. The only way we can do it is with him and through his strength. That's it. That is the only way we're going to do anything he tells us to do. The only way I'm doing this <laughs> is because of God. Because this is not, was not my plan for, for my life. I mean, I love what I do. I absolutely love it now. I'm just like, woohoo, yes. Um... And I I enjoy it now. And that's uh, even this morning, something my pastor talked about was if your dreams do not line up with the will of God, burn them, burn them all. (laughs) He was like, if it does not line up with God's will, God's plan for your life, burn it all. He's like, because your life is no longer your own. He bought you with his blood. He bought you. So your life is not yours anymore. Your life belongs to him. That's why I say is why call me Lord, Lord and not do what I say? Because he purchased you with his blood. And we made the choice to come into that relationship with him. It's also why the Bible says count the cost. Really count the cost of living the life. Are you you ready to die for this word? He died for you. You ready to die for this? Because even cowards won't enter the kingdom. And that's written in the word. That's what the word says. Those are not my words. That is what the Bible says. That cowards will not enter the kingdom. And one thing I want to point out is, think about this. It says, so not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. But only he who does the will of my father who is in heaven. So that goes against that once saved, always saved. Because people believe that, oh, well, once I'm saved, well, I can just live my own life and do whatever and I'm going to go to heaven and I'm good. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Because if you're not obedient to this word, it says only he who does the will of my father. Only he who does the will of my father. And I believe it's in Revelation 12, 5, to where Jesus even says, actually, let me see if I can look it up. Jesus even says that he will blot your name out of the book of life. Um, let me see. Okay, no, it's Revelation um, 3 and it's verse 5. And it says, he who overcomes shall be clothed in white garments and I will not blot his name from the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. So that means if you can blot a name from the book of life, that means there was a name in there to blot out so and we don't and everything in the word don't look at it and get scared because that spirit of fear that's not from god and that's not what this word is intended to do it's not intended to put um fear as in being afraid of you now you'll see you know the fear of the lord and that means reverence that's not called being afraid it's called having a reverence or a respect for the Lord and for, for his word. So understand that when you see that it's, that fear is not afraid, that fear is, is reverence and respect. Like you feared your mom. <laughs> you had that respect for her because you knew she didn't play when she said something, she meant it. Um, and it goes the same way. When he says something, he means his word. He means what he says. There's no compromise on that. He said, this is what I meant, what I said when I said this. So again, it says only he who does the will of the father. It's two things. Well done, thy good and faithful servant. Or depart from me, I never knew you. So I would challenge you, examine your life and be like, where's my obedience? How's my obedience level? Do I, am I obedient to God's will? Am I obedient to his word? Am I being diligent in keeping his word? And then... Again, you know, what is his will? His will is his word. So get in his word. Pastor Mary talked about on Friday night, connect to the word. And then we talked about again, what is the vision and the dream that God gave you? Remember that. Stand on that. Um, You know, Sister Trish talked about that last night. Remembering the word, remembering the vision. If you missed either one of those messages, please go back and listen to them again or listen to them for the first time or listen to them again. Um, And just retake notes and walk it out. Live it every day. 
And so the questions, one couple questions I want to leave you with is, are you doing what he has commanded you to do in his word? And are you obedient to the call of God on your life? And then how do we get to that well done, my good and faithful servant? Through obedience and through faith. Being obedient to his word and living by faith because the only way you can live in obedience is to live by faith. It takes faith to walk out what God has called you to do. It takes faith to do it. It takes faith to live this walk because when you have to forgive somebody and you're just like, so maybe like, Lord, do I, mm. but no, you forgive, you forgive in faith. Father, I forgive them and I, I release that to you. You have to do it every day. Father, I, for, I forgive them. I release it to you. Father, I forgive them. I release it to you. If you walk in love, 1 Corinthians 13, love is patient. Love is kind. It's not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrong. And even as we, we read that scripture, that's how God loves us. He's patient. He's kind. He's not easily angered. And if you don't believe that, look at the children of Israel. Because had we had to deal with the children of Israel about the second time, we would have been like, looky here. Now y'all look. <laughs> but look at how patient God is with them. And then eventually he says, okay, because you keep saying this, I'm going to let you have what you say. Watch your words. So we even see in the Old Testament how powerful words are. And then we see it again in the New Testament in Mark um, chapter 11 about, you know, our words and what we say and we'll have what we say. But again, obedience, walking by faith, praying for our enemies. And as you grow in the word and as you even learn how much God loves you and everything he's done for you, I mean, he forgave you. Think about that. Think about the things you've done. He forgave you. So why can't you forgive someone else? He loves you. All of you. The parts of you that you don't want to tell anybody. The things in your past. And the thing is when he forgives, he forgets. He doesn't hold that against you. Once you ask God to forgive, he forgets it. We're the ones who keep bringing it up to him. But even when we bring it up to him again, he has no recollection of it. It's like the first time he's hearing it. Because he doesn't remember, he doesn't He doesn't keep records of wrongs. So he doesn't remember that when we ask God to forgive us and when we repent, and repent means to turn away. So that's not something he, he remembers. So if he doesn't remember the things that we do, who are you to remember the wrongs others do against you? And it takes walking in love and growing in your love walk. I don't think you ever get to an arrival point in that, it's a, it's a every, every day. It's a choice every day, every moment to walk in love because you will have opportunities not to walk in love. You will have opportunities not to forgive. But that's not the life of a believer. We're obedient to the word. And you have the Holy Spirit to help you. That's what he's there for. He's your 24-7 counselor. He gives you the power to do this, the ability But you've got to be connected to the word. That is such a lifeline. And through prayer. Again, if you missed Friday nights, go back and watch it. Because that was just so being connected to the word. Just how important that is. Um, and make sure we're saying it and we're living it. And again, to the call of God on your life. The vision, the dream. Listen to that one too. That was last night's. Um, listen to those. Go back again. But I just really wanted to encourage you guys. You connect to God through obedience. That's how he knows you. Because that's who's familiar to him. You are created in his image. And that's his image. I mean, Jesus was obedient unto death. Obedient unto death. Where is our obedience like that? Even the apostles were obedient unto death. They were willing to die for this. Be persecuted, beaten, killed for the cause of Christ. Are we? Are we that obedient? Are we that strong in our faith? Um, do we still have growing to do? And the majority of us probably still have growing to do. Um, to, to get to that point to where I'm, I'm right, I'll die for this. He died for me. I'll die for this. Because even if you die, you're going to heaven. You're going to go see him in glory. So, you gain. 
So you either live by the word, I'm close with this, you either live by the word or you live by the world. Either or. There's no in between. Because um, I know sometimes we like to call ourselves Christians, call ourselves Christians, but then we want to live any kind of way we want to. Well, is Jesus your Lord? If your lifestyle is not reflecting it. And this is everything. And from what you watch, what you listen to, the music you listen to, um, because there's doctrine in music. Because if words are powerful, and they are, and the word says that they are, think about what you're confessing when you're singing these secular songs, because yes, you are making a confession and they are telling you who you are. A lot of these songs, tell, think, think about some of these songs that you hear. They will tell you who you are. Whether it says, I'm a this, I'm a that, and you're confessing that over and over, which becomes a meditation and it gets in you. And then you start living that way. But that's not who God created you to be. He called you righteous. He called you blessed. He called you healed. He called you a saint. He called you an ambassador, a priest, royal priesthood, holy nation, peculiar people. That's what he calls you. So, again, I would encourage you guys. Does he know you? Are you obedient to his word? Are you obedient to his will? And if you're not, repent. Because we know what we're supposed to do. We know what we're called to do. So repent and start start living it out. Don't beat yourself up over it. Don't, don't condemn yourself for it. Repent. And just like that, God forgives you and he forgets it. But repent sincerely. Don't just be like, Repent and then go back to the way. But that's not repentance. That's not true repentance. Repent is to turn away from. So you turn away from what you were doing and you start walking the way you're supposed to. So that's all I have for you tonight. Thank you guys so, so much for joining our conference the last two nights. Um, It has been an awesome thing for me. I've been so excited for this. It's been kind of years in the making and the planning and it was supposed to be in person and the Lord said go virtual. Praise the Lord he did because it was supposed to be last weekend and then this weekend and if you're in Texas you know what's going you know what's going on with the snow and the storm and everything else. So praise God to virtual and technology and everything we can do with technology. Um, again just oh, thank you guys for joining for sharing for just coming and participating. Hi to all of you. This is a Connect Conference, so hello. Um, but yeah, thank you again so much. Oh, if you would like to um, sell into the conference, give to the conference, or give to any of our speakers, you can go to Heart to Heart Men. That's H-E-A-R-T-T-O-H-E-R-T-M-I-N.com. Um, and you can do that there. Our books are also on our website along with our blog if you would like to check that out. Um, and again, thank you guys so much for joining. Um, and you guys have a great night. Thank you. Real quick, I actually want to pray for y'all. Father, I thank you for every person who has, um, listened to this conference. God, I pray that they will not just hear the word, but Father, that they will be obedient to the word and that they will start to live it out and walk in it and be connected to the word and remember the dream and the vision and the word that you have given them for their lives. And they will just not only be encouraged, God, but challenged to live out the word. Um, Father, we thank you for testimonies that are come th that are gonna come through and how we're gonna grow and be stronger um, and bolder for you, God. We thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Hi, Miss Trish and Mama Brenda. It's so good to see you guys. Well, you guys have a great night and thank you so much for joining us for Connect 2021. Have a great night.